can see the faces all around you, those great big smiles participating in the realm of ever-expanding good, that celebration. You all have now been initiated to being celebrants of the divine. Just say that to the person next to you. I'm a celebrant of the divine. I'm, a celebrant of the divine. I'm here to localize a cosmic celebration. I'm here to localize a cosmic celebration. It's party time in my soul. It's party time in my soul. Making me whole. Making me whole. That I may release more life energy. I see, I see it in you. You've come to set it free. To, set it free. to make a mighty difference on this planet. To make a mighty difference on this planet. And, to and to change the world for the better. Let's be this. Let's, be this. Let's, do, this. Let's do this. In the here and now. Here and now. Together. Together. And so it is. And so it is. Amen. Amen. Touch and agree. And feel the power that you've just experienced rolling through your own being right here and right now as the choir served as the, a vibrational tuning fork for that which lies within you, that infinite potential, that divine remembrance of the holy presence that is your very life and being. And as we have dialogued a little, well, it hasn't been a dialogue since more me talking to you, but <laughs> me listening and expressing. <laughs> But as we've discussed, uh, this month, the theme has been the eternal broadcast. There's an eternal broadcast from the presence of God, and our interest determines the station. All of that is a reminder that this dynamic, loving presence, by whatever name you choose to call this presence, is always beaming and broadcasting and radiating its presence everywhere. Throughout all creation, it's shouting out its name, which is why Jesus the Christ said, if I do not find one worthy, I will command the rocks to shout out my name. All of nature shouts out the holy broadcast of the Spirit, and worthiness simply means, are you paying attention? Are you in spiritual practice? Are you interested in the unfoldment of your soul? Are you interested in the presence of God? Are you interested in beauty and love and harmony and wholeness? If you are, you're becoming vibrationally worthy so that, so that not only the rocks and the trees uh, shout out the name and the nature of God, but your choice ability expands and you get to shout out the nature of God through your being, through your thinking, through your speaking, through your acting as a participant in the unfolding of your own soul soul. That was a long sentence, but you know what's driving it. Your interest is determining the station that you are on. Individuals have a tendency to live in a victim consciousness where they think they're being bombarded with all of this negativity all the time. Well, in truth, you're being bombarded with the holy vibration of the Spirit of God all the time. But your interest is determining the station that you're living in. And if you're interested in drama, if you're interested in negativity, if you're interested in fear, doubt, and worry, then that's the station that you're tuned into, and you'll find more and more and more and more of it. You even help create it. You'll tap into the database of human consciousness and re-experience the negativity that somebody else always already experienced so you wouldn't have to experience. You are here to up-level your interest. Where is God? What is God? Who am I? Where am I? What good is present that I cannot see? What's trying to emerge in my life? You become keenly interested as a dimension of your spiritual practice, and you will shift your station from fear to love, uh, uh, from anxiety to peace, and you begin to catch the inspired thought of the Spirit of God that will roll through you and become your speech, become your action, become your creativity, at best to become your everything. Your interest is determining the station that you are on, the station that you are, and so you're le releasing yourself right now from being a victim to being bombarded by negativity. You're turning the station. Say to your neighbor, I'm turning the station right now. I'm interested in beauty. I'm interested in abundance. I'm interested in God. I'm interested in love and peace. I'm interested in, I'm interested in my higher self. I'm in my That's, my station, That's my station, baby. 
and don't you touch my station. Come on now. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. So here's the overlay. Here's the broad, the broad stroke. The broad stroke is that you have a lifetime. I'm talking about an eternal lifetime that never had a beginning and will never end. In that lifetime, you have chapters. Your chapters are the incarnations that you have, whether it's on planet Earth or whether it is somewhere else. Those are chapters in an eternal life. You have chosen to have an incarnation on Earth, school, planet Earth. It is a great planet. It's a wonderful planet. We want you to take care of it. And it's a, a great school for you to participate in the unfolding of your soul. You've entered into the dynamic workout room and weight room of planet Earth. And the world as it is is absolutely perfect. Why? Because every stage of development is here. You have the lower stage from criminality and ignorance to the high stage of angelic beings that all they want to do is be of service. Every stage is here and every option exists at every stage. Infinite options at every stage. Now, whenever you exercise the choice to choose a higher option, you are incurring karma credit. You cannot occur karma credit if there are no options. And so Earth gives you the option to play in ignorance. It gives you the option to be stupid. It gives you the option to do all manner of things. But every time you make the choice to take the high road versus the low road, you develop strength. You develop spiritual muscles. That choice comes from practice of your meditation, your prayer, your affirmative prayer, your life visioning, your sacred service, your fellowship, your study. An insight occurs. You expand your awareness as a, an ever-expanding spiral. You expand your awareness, and now your ability to choose increases. It doesn't change the world yet. All the options of negativity are still there, but you keep choosing the high road. You are here, here, hearing in substance, choose ye this day whom ye shall serve, God or mammon, God or fear, God or doubt, God or worry, God or anxiety, God or greed. You hear, you see the options and you keep choosing the higher frequency and you keep becoming stronger and stronger until you have a tremendous amount of karma credit. You've engaged yourself to carry so much energy of the beloved presence that that becomes a new set point and a new heart set point, uh, a mindset and a heart set point for you to ultimately live surrendered to the highest and the best every moment of your life until you're living from revelation, meaning I'm not talking about the book of Revelation in the Bible. I'm talking about the spiritual awakening in which the inspiration of God is running your life. Your mind is not being used to figure things out. Your mind is being used as an avenue of surrendering to the presence that reveals to you moment by moment by moment the answers to every dilemma that you find yourself in. How does this work? There aren't any problems in the mind of God. They do not exist. If God had a problem, it would last forever and there would be something called eternal damnation, eternal hell. Fortunately, there aren't any problems in the mind of God. There are only spiritual ideas seeking to express themselves. And so when you open yourself up and you begin to live from revelation, instead of coming down into an issue and trying to figure something out, you rise up where all the answers are, and you become an availability to the inspired thought of God that takes over your existence. And you live moment by moment by moment listening, moment by moment by moment available, moment by moment by moment receptive, moment by moment by moment surrender to the divine ideation flowing through you as inspiration on a moment by moment basis. And then you move from perception, deception, uh, to immaculate conception. In other words, you know what I'm saying here in your heart and soul that perception is limited. 
We all have a certain perception of reality. You all have a perception of me right now. Some are seeing from my right, some are seeing from my left, some are seeing from the middle, and you all have a perception that you see is real, but there is a, a something that transcends perception where you begin to catch vision. And when you see from full, full, full spectrum vision, then you would see me not from your limited perception from your eyesight, you would see from the full spectrum seeing of your consciousness that there is a light shining and using Michael Bernard Beckwith to express that divine light. You would have a different perception, a different vision of each other. We are deceived by our perception. There is a deception in the perception. There is a perception of scarcity. There is a perception of lack. There is a perception of Main, main perception is there's a perception of separation from the presence of God that spins off all manner of perceptions. And the problem is that those perceptions are transmuted into thought forms, and those thought forms are transmuted into experience. So you literally, in earth school, experience your own perception and your own thoughts about reality, which causes me to say most people do not experience reality. They experience their thinking about reality. And so there is a, a deception from your perception. And so when you know that already, you can begin to walk in the world knowing you're not seeing everything rightly. Thus, it keeps you humble enough to pray and to meditate so you're able to say, open mine eyes that I may see a glorious reality. Let me see what's real so I do not speak on and act on my limited perception, thus fomenting that sense of separation that's producing the perception and the subsequent experience, thereby keeping me in an endless downward spiral loop into fear, doubt, worry, lack, limitation, not enough, NASA. That is not for you. That is not for you. You are here to rise and shine and soar and come into an awareness of the presence of God. So you're moving from perception, deception. Now remember, your, your inner work is not about trying to get out there something. Your inner work is clearing your perception. So you can see what's real. Then you're able to live from revelation and the inspiration moves you into expression. And then you come into immaculate conception and individuals, uh, uh, when they hear that word, they think about Mary and Jesus and this type of thing and, and that, that whole bag of worms about, about that. <laughs> I don't know why I said worms. Worms are very divine beings. But, <laughs> But we're talking about the presence of God as God has conceived you. Everybody has an immaculate conception. <laughs> it wasn't just Jesus had an immaculate conception. You had an immaculate conception. And not from your mother and dad, uh, but from the presence of God that reveals, that, that, that sees itself as you in its own life before the beginning of time. You have been immaculate conceived. Okay? And, and absolutely empowered by all the life that there is. And so your prayer work moves you to an awareness where you transcend what you have thought previously about yourself. You transcend what you uh, have thought others have thought about you. You transcend what you think other people are thinking about you. You transcend the societal bounds of what society thinks about you. Your color of your skin, your size, the, 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 the shape of your body, your sexual orientation, whatever the case may be. You transcend... Uh, all those thoughts about yourself and come into an awareness that you are immaculately conceived not as a physical body but as a spiritual being. You have a level of insight and revelation around that. A level of self-awareness. Capital self-awareness about the truth of your being. And as I said in the earlier service uh, that self-awareness uh, without self-expression leads to frustration. That once you begin to be self-aware, then there has to be some kind of self-expression. There has to be a gift. There has to be a, a, a generosity. There has to be an expression. And here is where you now go back into this perfect world 
with all of the challenges and with all of the options that we're facing, you go back into the world immaculately conceived by the presence of God, deeply self-aware as to who and what you are, you engage fully in the world, but making the high options along the way so that you're bringing heaven to earth in these options with all the stuff that we're facing. And right now, because the vibration of the planet is so high, that which was hidden is now surfacing, and that which was uh, hiding behind closed doors uh, is, that, is now surfacing for everyone to see, so it appears that things are getting worse, uh, but in fact, things have never been better on the planet any time in human history. There is less violence, less killing, less murder, less scourges of, of, of disease at any time in human history based on the size of the, it makes, based on the amount of people on the planet, and, but everything that needs to go to the next level is showing up to be recognized so that those who are immaculately conceived and know it can make a high choice, and that comes into what you're going to do from your self-expression, from your self-awareness. Self-awareness without self-expression keeps you frustrated, puts you back in the victim state. And so when you look at things rising up, things that seem bizarro and comical at times, even though they're not funny, you know, our, our, our president take, trying to uh, dash individuals for using their fist, First Amendment uh, right to, to kneel and say we're, we're not going to truck with the military policing of black men in the neighborhood, uh, the, 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 the president of the United States trying to take away the First Amendment and tell people to fire such folks. Uh, that's a lot of uh, 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 negativity coming to the surface from a very high office, which means you got some work to do. <laughs> you, you have some options up in here. <laughs> Back in the day, Somebody may think that in high office, but they wouldn't say it. Now, they just say it. <laughs> we got to fire those guys. We got to do this. We got to lock them up. You know, so that which was hidden is now surfacing. Now, those of us in the community, we know they thought that way all the time because we were the ones getting stopped. <laughs> but, but now everyone gets to see what's hidden in consciousness, and it's being revealed because the vibration is high. The vibration is high. The vibration is high. And so you can just go through the gamut of what we can see through the microscope of negativity on the planet, whether it's a nature rising up because the Atlantic Ocean is three degrees hotter than it used to be, whether it's a, a pollution, whether it's drought, whether it's hate, whether it's separation, whether it's nation states rising up, uh, uh, speaking war, and things of that particular nature, that which is rising up is rising up to be healed. It's rising up because it can't be hidden anymore. And so you, the individuals who are very aware that you have an entire lifetime, it never runs out, you will never die. You have a chapter called Incarnation, and you chose, you chose to have this chapter at this time in which the earth, I mean, in which the world is better than it's ever been, yet the next stage of development is ready to happen, so the worst that is in human consciousness is surfacing to be seen. You came here at this time. This is an exciting time to be here. And so you have to ask yourself, What's it all about, Alfie? You have to ask yourself, what am I doing here? What is mine to do? Not from mere reactivity, uh, but from responsibility. You move from reactivity to responsibility. Responsibility means the ability to respond from the presence of God. And so you ask. And not trying to figure it out, a revelation will occur. You'll be given your assignment. You'll be given what to say and when to say it. You'll be given the movement uh, that you are to take. And that movement, as you're self-aware, that, and that movement will be the, the vibrational frequency of the next stage of our human unfolding. It won't merely be a reaction to what's happening. 
it will actually be a, 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 a precursor to what's trying to happen, to what's trying to unfold. It will be a precursor uh, to the oak tree bursting out of the acorn. Precursor to the flower that's coming out of the flower seed. You will live vibrationally in the future now. And you'll begin to perhaps imagine all manner of things. You begin to imagine you perhaps and your grandkids or whatever going to the museum and, and, and your grandkids say, and they'll have all the religions in the museum because they won't be necessary anymore. And, <laughs> and they'll say, now, granddad, great granddad, wait a minute, you trying to say that all these religions used to fight against each other? But weren't they all trying to get to the same place to have being spiritually aware of oneness with God? Yes, they were. <laughs> But, but, but why were they fighting with each other when they were all trying to get to the same place? Ignorance. <laughs> We've come a long way, baby, but back in my day, they actually argued over the transportation to the higher state of consciousness. But weren't they all trying to get to the... Yes! But what, I can't explain it? It's just... Remnant of the animal mind causing separation. Well, doesn't religion unite? Yes, but it's in a museum, baby. We don't do that anymore. Okay? We don't do that anymore. You will. You're to carry that vibration now. You're to carry that vibration now. And the kids will say, did, did every country really have a bomb? Didn't they know if you blow up something, everybody's going to be affected? Yes, baby. That's why the bombs are in the museum. We don't do that no more. We talk. We communicate. We, 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 we reason together. We share our resources. We don't plunder and steal other countries' resources anymore. We used to do it. That's how we used to operate. Might makes right. We, we kind of grown now, babe. We kind of grown. Okay, that was a weird time you lived in. Oh, my God, I'm, I'm so glad we don't live in that time now. Well, that time that you just imagined is in your heart and soul right now. That moment is in your heart and soul. That transcending of religiosity into spirituality exists within you right now. That transcending of might makes right consciousness is in your heart right now. The coming together and moving from perception, deception. And when we're ignorant, of course, our perception can be manipulated. Can be manipulated. You know, you, again, you look at the crime rate across the nation, it's down over the years. But if you hear a politician, crime rate is up, we gotta do this, we gotta lock people up. It's all a lie, you see. Don't let your perception be deceived by anyone. Do your own study. Your own research. And you see there's an unfolding of consciousness that's taking place. And you're here not to be bound by society. You're here to change society. To expand it with love, peace, harmony, generosity, forgiveness, well-being. It is high time that our prison industrial industry stops running the economy of our country. It's high time. And so we, we talk about these things, they seem so big, you see. But everything starts with small actions, small prayers, smalls are not participating, you see. You all have lived during the time in which it was impossible that the Berlin Wall would fall down or apartheid would end. It was impossible, impossible. A momentum happened in consciousness. Conversation, vision, dialogue, actions. You're living in such a time now where that which is ugly can be seen very clearly now. But more importantly, this broadcast of the spirit is untouched by time. You catch it, you'll write some good music. You'll catch it, you'll be a great teacher. You catch it, you'll be a great healer. You catch it, you'll be a great whatever it is your dharma to do. And when you're doing it, you're bringing heaven to earth. A momentum happens. Then shift occurs. And things that we used to be able to live with in a society, just we can't live with them anymore. You see, just can't do it. And 
so if all of you are leaving today and you've signed the declaration to go to a plant-based diet and to meditate and pray every day, oh, you got quiet on that, huh? <laughs> I, was just, I was just taking the temperature, just like... <laughs> okay, we'll start with this. As all of you are dedicating yourself to having a daily tryst with the presence of God, getting your marching orders from the eternal and not from time, and moment by moment by moment, catching with that expanded self-awareness, expanded self-expression, so that frustration is dissolved, and that you're living in the future now. You're living in what's trying to emerge now. You're living in the description of the possible now vibrationally. And so with all the options that will be coming at us to choose ye this day whom you're going to serve, the past, you're going to serve fear, you're going to serve separation, or you're going to serve wonder and awe and generosity and peace and love. All the options are coming. This is the perfect place for it because every option exists on the planet. Every option, you can get into revenge or you can get into forgiveness. It's all here. It's all here. But every time you choose the higher option, you incur karma credit. You get stronger. Until after a while, that straight and narrow road is the only road. And after a while, the still small voice is the only voice. <laughs> and you are living a surrendered life. Don't be afraid of the word surrender. We're not surrendering to an external God that's going to say, well, your particular thing to do on this planet is to be sick. No, there's no such God. The presence of God's will is always for a greater expression of life. So when you surrender to the presence, you're surrendering to the next stage of your own unfolding, which is a greater expression of more life, more creativity, more generosity, more of all of the qualities of the spirit. Let your face know this right now. Just, just give yourself a face asana. <laughs> when you're doing your yoga, sometimes you, it gets difficult to hold the pose. Some kind, you can, people can't hold the pose for three seconds. I'm talking about this one. Because <laughs> you start to start thinking about what's not working in your life. Hold that pose. And let that tonic chemical go through the body temple so that you can be a revelator. You can hear the revelation of what's going to keep that smile there. It's in you. Oh, my God. I want you to feel this because we're living in great times. Times that you get to choose the higher option. And even when the highest office is trying to take someone's First Amendment rights away and calling them by profane names, we will not succumb. We will stand up the strong vibration and ask individually, what's my assignment? Ugliness has reared its head. What's my assignment? I will not add to more ugliness. I opt out of that. And I want my word, my actions, to be a representation of what's trying to emerge. Some call it the future. We call it our now. That's where we're living. That's where we're hanging. Look to your neighbor and saying, I'm opting out of the old. I opt out of limitation. I opt out of the perception of separation. I opt out of the perception of separation. And I come into the high vision of unity. I come into the, high vision. the high vision of oneness. The high vision of, love. The high vision of love. The high vision of Dynamic love. peace. Dynamic peace. And it's happening in my heart right now. And it's happening in my heart right now. Right now. Right, now. right here. Right now. right now, right here, right, here. right, now. right now, right here, right here. together. together. Yeah, just do that. Just get your body into it. Just, <laughs> just, just let your body just, just feel it. Move it, man. 
You know what I mean? Just move and groove with the spirit of God. Mm. 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 So I just want to say I'm so happy that I get to do this. I'm so happy I get to see you. I'm so happy I get to meet you heart to heart. I'm so happy that we have one of the greatest spiritual communities. Transcending religiosity and coming into a whole soul awareness of the presence those, that, ins that insight which birthed all religions. We go directly to the source. So we turn within in this moment. And we allow ourselves to go directly to the source of all creation. The source of everything. That would be the presence, as I say, that is never an absence. And it just, it does something to our heart. It just makes us grateful. Yeah. It makes us thankful. We, the humility of this source being everywhere in its fullness, this grants us the willingness to be humble before it. As it's in us, as it's through us, as it is us. It just, it's infinity. Brings us to our proverbial knees with such gratitude. Yeah. 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 And whatever the issues we're facing in life, just think what those issues are facing. Uh -huh. <laughs> They're facing God, baby. Right. <laughs> those issues are facing a presence. Right. 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 They must be transmuted. Yeah. Right. So in gratitude and in thanksgiving, we... We symbolically bow our head. And recognize the presence everywhere. It is everywhere. And feel so unified with it that this presence is closer than this next breath we're about to take. That breath, the presence is closer than that. If we put our, our finger on our jugular vein and feel that pulse, as the Quran says, Closer than our neck vein. Fire burns it not, water wets it not, wind blows it not away, says the Bhagavad Gita. Religion's got some good stuff if you don't get caught. And so feeling that sense of unity. The word that I'm speaking right now comes from a connection with the power and the presence and the love of God. And I have the privilege to speak the word for every individual here, near and far, live streaming or in person, Facebook technology or in person, knowing that their life is the life of God Almighty, all beauty, all joy, all power, and that this divine life is so coursing through our spiritual veins that anything and everything that would hinder, delay, obstruct, or deny the fullness of life is now being dissolved into the nothingness from which it has come never to exist again. It's being transmuted into a higher frequency which is representing the next stage of our own unfolding. We give such great gratitude, such great thanksgiving that we have the ability through expanded awareness to speak a word to proclaim, to affirm, to absolutely declare that life is magnificent. And that this one life that we choose to call the presence of God is flowing through us and that all of our needs are met. We can feel it. We can feel the abundance. Our, Deception of our perception is being dissolved, and, and we don't live in a land of scarcity. We, la we live in a field of abundance. We live in a field of infinite opportunities and infinite potential. Every seeming recession has birthed 
ingenuity and innovativeness, creativity and newness. From the field of abundance and the field of infinite potential. And so right now we choose to live in the field of infinite abundance. We're living here right now. That we're, therefore, the deception of scarcity is dissolving right now. And I know the surface mind is saying, but wait a minute, it, 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 there's not enough this, there's not enough that. And I've experienced it. We already said that you experience your perception. So we're not letting our perception deceive us anymore. No. We are immaculately conceived by your presence. There's nothing missing in us. Nothing is missing. We have everything that is real within us. And I call it out now. Come out, prosperity. Come out, health. Come out, harmony. Come out, brilliance. Come on out, genius. Come on out. Come on out. Come on out and play divine peace divine love, divine joy. I'm calling your name, which means I'm calling on your real nature. Come on out. Become the activity of our individual and, and the activity of our collective awareness. This is why we've shown up in mass in a divine community to celebrate the divine presence and to so amplify this celebration that a new field is created. And then we walk and talk from this field Become the midwives to that which is trying to be born right now. New life, new way of being, and across the board. We'll keep, I think we'll keep our First Amendment rights. I think we'll keep them. We'll keep our ability, whatever it is. Gay rights, black, white rights, animal rights, whatever it is, we have the ability to say, hey, this is what I feel. And so I too go down on a knee and say in substance the military policing of those in the urban cities is off base. Something must change. Rise up, catch a vision of the possible. And say, what is it that's ours to do? And so we feel now that our needs are met. We feel spiritually that we're connected with each other. We feel spiritually that something's trying to be born, and we do not hate anyone. We dive deep within our soul and love all of our brothers and sisters on the planet. Those in agreement, those not in agreement, we rise and keep our heart open in love, love, love. Because the new world can't be built on separation and hate. It's built on the vibration of love. And so as you take the hand of the being and we get ready to pray for our brothers and sisters here, we invite Ricky to give us a feeling tone.
that hand of that being next to you. And with this vibrational soundtrack, it's helped creating this dynamic 